OK, now let's discuss the effect of pH on an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. OK, now pH, let's just discuss a few basics. Um, pH is not on a, a continuous, uh, in, you know, indefinite scale like um, temperature and concentrations. Uh, we have to remember that pH is a scale and what it measures uh, essentially is the concentration of hydrogen ions, okay, or H plus ions. So um, at high pHs, we have uh, very few H plus ions, lots of OH minus, okay, and as we go to the other end of the scale, we have lots of H plus. Okay, so low pHs are acidic, high pHs are alkaline. They are equally, uh, you could say they are equally uh, potent because we are essentially measuring the concentration of reactive entities. Okay, so these things can affect uh, a protein structure because they are charged and they can, they can um, de- stabilize the bonds which are holding the tertiary structure together. The interactions between the R groups such as ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, they are all affected, I will say affected, by H plus and OH minus. Okay? Right, so let's move on. Okay, so here we have our axes again. We're looking at the rate of reaction on the y-axis and we are looking at varying pH on the x-axis, okay? Um, right, so what the idea is, is that there are some pHs which are just right for the protein to have the right tertiary structure to perform its function properly, okay? And this pH is called the optimum pH. So, um, and it's not to be assumed that this is always a neutral pH. Some enzymes prefer low pHs because that's the pH in which their tertiary structure is right to perform their function. And some enzymes prefer, uh, prefer high pHs because, because that's the right pH to maintain their shape. Okay? Um, right, let's continue. Now, what we'll assume is that when the enzyme is in a particular pH, where its tertiary structure allows it to interact with its substrate properly, at that pH, there is just the right balance, there is just the right balance of H plus and OH ions to, for that protein to have all the right interactions, i.e. its ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, are just right for it to work properly, okay? And at that point, at that point, its activity is optimum, okay? So we're looking at this bit right here. So for this enzyme, for this enzyme, at this pH, its shape is just right to complement the substrate and perform its function of converting that substrate to a product. Okay, so its activity is high. But what can happen is that if we vary that pH, so if we go further away from that optimum pH, the balance of H plus and OH is changed, and therefore we are affecting the shape of the protein in, an, in, a, in a way that takes it away from optimum and it's no longer complementary to its substrate, okay? So how can we represent that? Okay, so just had, added some diagrams just to explain the point is that if as, as we go away from the optimum pH in either direction, high pHs or low pHs, um, it changes the shape of the protein 
and, it's, and the active site is no longer complementary to the substrate. So the main points here would be that at the optimum pH, okay, the tertiary structure, which, remember, is dependent on R group interactions such as ionic bonds, H bonds, hydrogen bonds, they ensure the right shape that the substrate, that the active site is complementary to the substrate. Okay, we have increase in the formation of the enzyme substrate complex and therefore an, an increase in the rate of product formation. Okay, but because at that pH, that, that was the optimum, okay? But as we move away from that pH, it starts to affect the ionic bonding and the hydrogen bonding. And as a result of that, now I'm just going to put it in, in the high pH section, but it's equally applicable to the low pH section. What we'll have is the active site changing shape, and it's no longer complementary to the substrate. And as a result of that, we have reduced rate of formation of the enzyme substrate complex, and therefore a decrease in the rate of product formation. And that's very important to finish off with. OK, so whatever I've mentioned here, OK, here, it could equally be happening at the low pHs, okay? So as that pH decreases even further, the rate of reaction goes down. And as this pH increases away from the optimum, again, the rate of reaction goes down, okay? Okay, I think that just about covers that.